Okay, this is the second part of lesson 10.1, and this is just application of the theorems and things like that, and maybe some other definitions and so on. All right, so here we go. Uh, we have a picture here. We got seven. We got an X for this whole thing. 18 just goes from here out to here, and this uh, isn't labeled as anything. And it tells you that this is a tangent line right here. Maybe we should say tangent segment, but this thing that the X is on is a tangent segment. Okay, so go ahead and copy that picture down. And what we're going to do is we're going to solve for X. Okay, so go ahead and get that copied down real quick. Pause it if you need to or whatever. But make sure you copy this into your notes. All right, here we go. Now, thinking back to theorem 10.1. Okay, theorem 10.1, if this is a tangent line, then it has to be perpendicular to the radius at the point of tangency. So we know we have a right angle here. You guys remember this from the last video, hopefully. All right, so since this is a tangent line, we know we have a right angle right here. Okay, so now let's think through this. All right, I've got a right triangle. So, obviously, we should by now know that we can use our Pythagorean theorem. So, 7 squared plus x squared, that's the a and the b, the hypotenuse, this whole thing is c. Okay, so let's start writing this down. I'm going to write in pen so you can see it a little bit easier instead of keeping with the pencil. So, 7 squared plus x squared equals something. Well, what in the world does that equal? Well, this is 18. Well, what about this? Do I need to like put another x in here? Well, I shouldn't put x because it's not the same distance as that. So do I put a y in here? And that gets really confusing now that I have two letters. No, we don't need to. Remember, the definition of a circle, all of the points on the circle are the same distance from the center point. So if this distance is 7, then this distance has to be 7. And then what do I do with the 18 and 7 to get the whole distance? Don't multiply them. Make sure you add them. And 18 plus 7 is 25. And we're going to square that. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So let's do some math now. 7 squared plus X squared equals 25 squared. So 49 plus X squared equals 625. We subtract the 49 from both sides x squared equals 576. Take the square root on both sides. We type that into our calculator, and if it gives us a nice non-decimal answer, we use it. If it gives us a decimal answer, we break it down. But this one gives us 24, so we're done. 24 units. It's pretty easy. Okay, so we just solve for x. x has to equal 24 units. Okay, that was pretty simple. All right, let's take a look at another example. Okay. Once again, this is a tangent line. Okay, so we got an x right here on the radius. We have a 60 up here where the tangent line and the tangent segment is, and we got a 52 right here. Okay, so go ahead and copy that down, and we'll take a look at it. All right, here we go. You should have this copied down by now. Um, if you've already attempted it, that's great. If not, it's understandable. This is actually a little different than the last one. But still, same thing. We have a tangent segment, so we know we have a right angle. So we know we have a right triangle. Okay, so a squared, x squared, plus b squared, 60 squared, equals... This one's a little harder. Okay, well, just like before, we know that the radius distance never changes. So if that's x, this also has to be x. So what's this whole distance? We don't multiply, we add. So that whole distance is 52 plus x. Or you could say x plus 52. Either way is fine. I'm going to go with the x plus 52. So we put x plus 52 squared. Now... If you try to solve this and you do it the wrong way, you're going to run into major problems. So I'm going to first show you how you do it wrong because I see this a lot on kids' papers. Okay, So we have this x squared plus 60 squared equals parentheses x plus 52 squared. Okay, This is what I get a lot of times. x squared plus 3,600. That's good. And then I get this. x, oh well. I got a squared, so I'll square the x, and I'll square the 52. Well, we have a major problem right now. Here's our major problem. Subtract x squared, they cancel off. Subtract x squared from both sides, they cancel off. 3600 equals 2704. 
that is obviously not a true statement. There is no x to solve for. We have major problems. Well, Mr. Oates, I can't do this problem. Yes, you can. You just did it wrong. I'll get this on the quiz. Mr. Oates, I don't know what I did wrong. Well, you did it the way I taught you in class. That was completely and utterly wrong. Well, what should I do? Do it the way I taught you to do it. Well, what do you mean by that? I hope you study because I'm not going to answer that question on the quiz. All right, so let's show you how you should do it. So, x squared plus 60 squared. Well, that's still x squared plus 3600. Now, what is x plus 52 squared? Well, let's come off to the side here. When we square something, it means multiply it by itself, right? So I'm going to take x plus 52 times x plus 52, which means x times x is x squared. x times 52 is 52x. 52 times x is 52x. And 52 times 52 is 2,704. Now, this is usually what we call FOIL. Okay, if you've heard of FOIL, first, x times x. Outer, x times 52. Inner, 52 times x. And then finally, last, 52 times 52. Other people, I know I've seen this, kind of do this thing. That's fine as well, as long as you multiply everything here by everything there. x times that and x times that. 52 times that and 52 times that. Okay, you're going to get this. Now, like terms right here, 104x. So, x squared plus 104x plus 2704. Now, if we subtract x squared from both sides, yes, they cancel off. What do I have? I have 3600 equals 104x plus 2704. You will notice how that is a whole lot different than this wrong one right here where this whole 104x thing is missing. So if you are completely missing this 104x thing or whatever number it might be as you're doing your math, that's why you're getting it wrong. Okay, so now what do we do? We subtract the 2704 which leaves me with 896, if I did that right, equals 104x. We divide by 104. If we try to divide that, it's going to give us a decimal, which we don't want, so we're going to reduce. I know that these are both divisible by 4, so 224 over 26 equals x. I can go farther, those are both divisible by 2, so 112 divided by 13 equals x. Stick a label on it of units, inches, feet, whatever it might be. That's about, what is that? That's about 8 point, I don't know, 8.7, maybe 8.8, .8, something like that, okay? Um, maybe down more toward 8.6, all right? But um, you could check it on your calculator. Uh, it's just a little bit difficult to do so, but you'd have to come back up here and do 112 over 13 squared plus 60 squared and hit enter. And then you would do 52 plus 112 over 13 squared and hit enter. And I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, so we got our calculator here. So 112 divided by 13 squared plus 60 squared. Hit enter. Okay, that's the a squared plus b squared part. The c squared part is 112 divided by 13 plus 52, parentheses, and then the squared goes on the outside, enter. See, it's the exact same thing. It tells us our answer checks, All right? Let's go to our next example. This one's a little bit different, kind of a takeoff of the same thing, but a tiny bit different, so go ahead and copy this down. Okay, we got a circle. I have a 12 and a 35. And that's a 25 right there. Is this a tangent line? Okay, is this a tangent line? All right, well, we don't know. They didn't tell me whether it was a tangent line or not, so I gotta figure it out. Now remember that theorem said if and only if in it. So if it's a tangent line, then it has to be perpendicular. If it's perpendicular, then it has to be a tangent line. Ah, okay, so here we go. We're gonna check to see if this is perpendicular, and we learned how to do this in a previous chapter. I don't know if this is a right angle. I'm not gonna put a right angle mark. I'm gonna put a big old question mark right there. Now what about this? Should I call this X? I don't know what it is. No. The length of the radius never changes. This is a 12. 
Okay, so what in the world do we do? Well, we got our, we have a triangle. We don't know if it's a right triangle or not. We learned how to do this in a previous chapter. A squared plus B squared question mark C squared. Where did that 37 come from, Mr. Oates? You tell me, where did that 37 come from? Can you figure out where that 37 came from? It came from here, right? What do we do with these two numbers? We don't multiply them, we right we add them okay so let's do some math 12 squared 144 35 squared what is that 1225 37 squared 1369 all right let's add these looks like a 9 and a 6 and a 3 and a 1 1369 1369 and an equal sign so yes it's a right angle so yes it's a right triangle so yes it's a tangent line what if you went through one of these and you got you know greater than here well remember greater than a squared plus b squared is greater than c squared it means it's acute well if it's acute it's obviously not a right angle so it's obviously not perpendicular so it's obviously not a tangent line or if you get less than in here and it's obtuse then you still don't have a tangent line so really is this a tangent line? The question is really saying, is this a right angle? If the answer is yes, then this answer is yes. If the answer here is no, it's not a right angle, then this is no, it's not a right angle. Okay, so that's what's going on with that type of question. All right, and then finally a question that looks like this. Okay, so let me zoom back out a little bit so you can see the whole picture. That's too far, there we go, okay. And I know it's kind of hard to read, but this says these are both tangent segments. 6x plus 12, 8x plus 2. Okay, 6x plus 12 and 8x plus 2. Got a big old circle. Got these coming out here, in and out here at the same spot. Wait, that looks familiar. Hold on. Theorem 10.2. Let me go back and grab that. Theorem 10.2. If two tangent segments begin at the same exterior point, then these segments had to be congruent to each other. Their measures have to be equal to each other. So what do we know about this? It says they're tangent segments. We can see that they start at the same exterior point, so therefore these are congruent to each other. They are equal to each other. So 6x plus 12 has to equal 8x plus 2. So what in the world do we get when we do 6x plus 12 equals 8x plus 2? We subtract the 6x from both sides. 12 equals 2x plus 2. We subtract the 2 from both sides. 10 equals 2x. We divide by the 2 and we get x equals 5. Let's check it. 6 times 5 plus 12. 6 times 5 is 30, plus 12. 30 plus 12 is 42. Okay, let's come down here. 8 times 5, plus 2. 8 times 5 is 40. 40 plus 2 is 42. 42, 42, looks like it's working. All right, that looks good, so let's label it. Didn't give me a label, so once again, we'll just put units. Could have been inches or feet or centimeters or anything like that. All right, that's it. That's some applications of those theorems and some of the terms and so on. All right, any questions, make sure you ask in class, and you'll have homework to do in class.